So part of what I wanted to explain was the following. A quick rundown of some of the concepts that we spoke about in the flight of Icarus. So number one, it's referring to the themes. When we think of themes, what that means is the lesson that we learn from the story. Not the lesson of what happened in the story, it's not a summary, it's something, an idea that we can apply to our own lives and that we see in the story. Maybe a character applied it to their own life or maybe they didn't apply it in their life and they suffered a consequence. Then it would become a theme, a lesson about life, about human life that applies to anyone and that we can see an example of within the story. So for the flight of Icarus, we notice that there are two main themes that we can discuss. The first theme relates to the advice that Icarus' father, Daedalus, gave him before they attempted their escape. Okay? The advice was not only to not fly too high, but it was more so, hey son, you need to be moderate. Okay? You need to fly in moderation. You can't fly too high and you can't fly too low. If you fly too high, the consequence will be that the wax from your wings will melt and the wings will be damaged or fall off and then you won't be able to fly. And if you fly too low, okay, the mist from the waves and the water, the ocean, will wet the wings and then they will be too heavy for you to be able to fly. So with that, the lesson that we learn, that we can apply to our own lives, is that we need to do things in moderation. Too much of even a good thing can be a little bit bad. And too little prevents you from enjoyment into uh, that, that concept. Let's take for example, with studying. If you study too little or you don't study, then you're not going to be prepared for an evaluation. However, if on the other hand, you study too much, you spend too much time pre preparing, then maybe you're not going to have uh, enough sleep or you're not going to be able to pay attention to the little things or you're going to lose so much energy only dedicating to, st to studying that you're going to miss out on you know, some of the relationships, some of the experience, some of the friendships, some of the time with your family. So studying too much can be an issue, but studying too little can also have its own consequences. Okay, Gary, no goofing off. I am about to write the greatest essay of all time. Even more important than the paper is the pencil. Okay, here we go. SpongeBob! <laughs> Come on, pencil. Make words. Uh, another theme that we can see in the flight of Icarus would be the idea of knowing our place in respect to society and the Greek gods. Okay? It was very important for them to always pay respect and treat the gods with the utmost reverence. So the moment that Icarus flew high and he saw the people on the ground looking at him and wondering, wow, what's going on there? Is that a god? And he felt so full of himself that he wanted to go higher and higher and higher. When at this time period, um, flight was something that was kind of a superpower. It was only gods could do this. So the moment that he did that and he had that feeling and he went higher and higher and higher, they decided to, uh, or, or the outcome, the, the outcome was that there was a consequence, okay? And the consequence for him was plunging into the ocean and drowning, losing his life. Why? Not only for not following the advice that was given to him, but also for trying to be on equal ground, equal ground as the gods. Okay. Um, as kids, and remember that some of these stories are passed down or passed down through word of mouth, 
or uh, with storytelling, uh, usually starting with very young kids, maybe your age, maybe a little bit younger. Another lesson that we can see in that respect is being able to pay attention and listen to the advice of the wiser, older people that came before you. Okay, so here, when the dad gives the advice and the son doesn't follow, and because of that, the son suffers a consequence, in those actions, in that plot of the story, there is the lesson, okay, that we need to follow the advice of the older people. Um, so just focusing on those things that happen in the plot of the story, we can see immediately that there are a couple of lessons that we can learn from this. Now, the next thing or the next kind of question that could be uh, tied to these themes would be a little bit more of a culture issue, okay? When, we, when uh, different cultures, they share their stories, those stories are imbued or mixed in with the practices, the beliefs, the things that are considered good or bad in that culture. In this case, when we see the story, we see what Icarus did, um, what Daedalus did as a father, and the consequences of those actions, we can say, we can immediately make an assessment of what is it that uh, the Greeks value. So, in this case, the values of the Greeks in here, we can tie them to loyalty, we can tie them to family, we can tie them to reverence to the gods, okay? And we can tie them to wisdom and listening to the older folk who have that wisdom and came before us. All of these ideas were very important in Greek culture. Those were the things that, uh, as a foundation for society, would promote the success of that civilization or the group of people. Okay? Um, so how can we talk about family? We see in the story that Daedalus, despite telling his son the, the risk and seeing that his son wasn't able to follow, fell into the ocean, in the story we see that he went back and recovered the body of his son and carried it to uh, the island to bury it, give it proper honor. Um, and with this, he showed the importance of family. He didn't just forget his son, he went back and got that body, gave it a proper burial, and mourned, mourned like he was sad for the loss of his son. So that shows us the importance of family and the loyalty that he had. He also shows us the respect to the gods. In the end, he realized why it was that his son uh, plummeted to the ocean and drowned, and he realized that this had to do with not having paid the right respect to the gods. So what did he do? He went to the temple, or sorry, he built a temple, and um, in memory of um, Apollo, and gave up his wings. So he made a sacrifice to the gods saying, hey, look, I know what happened. I realized my mistake. Here are these wings in sacrifice. I will not fly again because I realize that this is a power, an ability that is restricted to the gods. And I already learned my lesson by paying the price. Okay? Um, and then we can also talk about the ability that we have to listen to the advice of people who came before us with uh, Daedalus caring for his son, giving him guidance, and giving him the advice, hey, look, this is the way that you need to do things. And then when Icarus did not follow that, he suffered the consequence. The next thing that I wanted to talk about with you guys was the idea of foreshadowing. This will apply to every story that we read throughout the year or that you read maybe on your own time as you read novels, uh, maybe when you watch shows on Netflix, it also applies. Foreshadowing is your ability to predict what could happen based on the clues that you're being given in a story. Does it mean that, it will, that you will always be correct or you have to 100% predict it or it's not foreshadowing? No, this is more so of uh, the ability that you build where you kind of have a, a clue, an idea of what could happen based on what is happening in the story and the observations that you're able to make. Dad? Mm. We're pals, right? <laughs> right. And we'll always be together, right? Simba, let me tell you something that my father told me. Look at the stars. The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. 
Really? Yes. So whenever you feel alone, just remember that those kings will always be there to guide you. And so will I. Okay, and the last point that I want to talk about is how do we give quality answers in class? So in summary, before I continue, the way that we give quality answers in class is a three-step process. Number one, you want to answer the question. Pay very close attention to what they're asking. Is it a how question? Asking for the way that something is happening? Is it a why question? asking for the reason behind why it happened, okay? So the first thing you want to do is you want to answer the question. The second thing you want to do is you want to provide evidence, okay? There are two ways that you can provide evidence. You can either get a quote, okay, a quote from the story and put it there as proof of what you're saying or you can put it into your own words. You can paraphrase, okay? So that means taking something that's in the book and putting it almost the exact same way in the in your answer but changing the words to reflect maybe the way that we speak so first thing you answer second thing you provide evidence okay you give evidence from the text the last thing that you do is you explain in your own words how the evidence connects to the answer so the first thing is answer the question second thing is giving evidence and the last thing is explaining that evidence in your own words. If you do these three things, you are almost guaranteed to get full point value in any text analysis questions. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! What, 9,000? There's no way that can be right! Cut it! I think it's right. After all, I was trained in the art of Kaoken. Huh? Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is show you in a little presentation some steps that you can take or some strategies to be able to approach this. And this should make it very easy for you to progress in this story, but also in our evaluations in the future. 